In this lesson, we'll build the main body of the arcade cabinet by expanding on the box modeling approach I described in an earlier video. Again, with box modeling, we start with the basic cube and gradually add detail by extruding faces, inserting edges, and moving points. Maya includes an extensive modeling toolkit found in the main menu within the Mesh, Edit Mesh, and Mesh Tools categories. But many of the most commonly used modeling tools are collected within the Modeling Toolkit, which we can access by choosing Mesh Tools, Show Modeling Toolkit. When we activate the toolkit, you'll see a couple of the tools we've already used within this course and we'll use again in the next two lessons. For a lot of new Maya users, having duplicate commands accessible through different areas of the UI can feel very disorienting. For example, I can access the Bevel tool here in the Modeling Toolkit, up above in the main menu within the Mesh Tools section, and here on the Polygons Shelf tab. And remember that all of the menu items are also accessible when we hold down the space bar to view the Marking menu, and many are mapped to default hotkeys. But Maya's UI design is meant to accommodate a range of different user workflow preferences. So, as you continue using Maya, I'd recommend choosing a workflow that makes the most sense to you and just sticking with it. As long as you can easily access the appropriate tool when you need it, there's no reason to have every tool location committed to memory. One more quick comment on the Maya UI design. With all these redundant tools, the interface can feel pretty cluttered, especially if you're working on a smaller monitor. But you can hide any portion of the UI that isn't needed for your project and maximize the size of your camera views. For example, while you're working on a 3D model like we're doing in this course, you may not have any reason to view the animation interface elements. So you could hide them by going to Display, UI Elements, and unchecking the Range Slider and the Frame Slider. If you prefer to access commands from the main menu or the marking menu rather than the shelf, you could hide that too by returning to Display, UI Elements, and unchecking the shelf. And if you ever need to restore the visibility of any UI elements you may have hidden, just return to Display UI Elements and select Show All UI Elements. With all that in mind, let's switch to the side view to create the body of the arcade cabinet. I'll create a cube and scale and translate it to match the dimensions of the lower portion of the cabinet in the reference image. We're going to need some additional geometry for the shelf that supports the game buttons, so I'll extrude the top face of the cube. Rather than right-clicking to enter component mode and select the face, I'll click on the multi-component button within the modeling toolkit. This button switches to component selection mode and then automatically detects different component types based on the mouse position. I'll click on the top face, then click on the modeling toolkit extrude button and drag the blue arrow to move the new face into position. I'll create another extrusion to extend the shelf forward. One thing that's important to keep in mind when using the Extrude tool is that you need to make sure to move or scale the newly created geometry with each extrusion. Every time we click on the Extrude tool, new faces are created right on top of the original geometry. Leaving multiple faces sitting directly on top of one another or creating polygons that have no area will result in display problems later on. So as soon as I've clicked on the Extrude button, I'll be sure to pull the new face forward and make any necessary scale and rotation adjustments. I'll add a few more extrusions to flesh out the rest of the arcade cabinet. First, I'll extrude the top face up to create an area for the game display. Then I'll create an additional extrusion by typing G to repeat the last action, so that I have enough geometry to support the sign at the top of the cabinet. Finally, I'll select the top front face and extrude a top ledge for the sign panel. If we need to make any further shape adjustments, we can left mouse drag a selection box around vertices and move them into position using the Move tool. I'll hold down the V key to activate vertex snapping so that I can align all the vertices on the back panel. When using vertex and grid snapping, you'll often want to restrict movement to just a single axis so that all the points don't collapse into the same location. So I'll drag the yellow arrow to move these verts forward and back rather than dragging on the light blue box while vertex snapping is active. As a last step for this object, we'll round off some of the corners with the bevel tool. When we drag a selection box over an object in multi-component mode, vertices are automatically selected. But to add bevels, we'll want to select edges. Clicking on the middle icon beneath the multi-component button activates edge selection. Now we can move to the top view and easily grab all the front and back facing edges with a single selection box. When we return to the perspective view, we'll see that some of these edges won't need bevels, for example, the edges along the middle portion of the back of the cabinet. And the bevels on the front shelf and ledge 
will need to be larger and rounder. So I'll deselect those edges by holding down Shift while left mouse clicking or dragging. Then I'll click on the bevel button. I'll adjust the bevel radius by selecting the fraction attribute and middle mouse dragging. Then I'll select the shelf and ledge corners, which require larger bevels, and hit the bevel button one last time. For these bevels, I'll increase the number of segments to 2 and raise the fraction value to about 0.2. With the body of the arcade cabinet complete, we can turn our attention to the side panels in the next video.